this because we have received reports of plans to shut down the broadcast media and to shut down the internet and throw the country into information darkness ahead of tomorrow's demonstrations. Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to the analysis of Yoleno TV. I'm glad you're well from wherever you watch this channel. Now, dear viewers, at this juncture, it is no longer imp important whether someone is in Azimio or someone is in Kenya Kwanza. It is all about Kenyans. At this juncture, what the country is experiencing is something akin to what used to transpire during the colonial era. A couple of hours ago, probably two hours ago, there was a press conference from the media fraternity. And in that press conference, the media fraternity alleged a plan by the Kenya Kwanza government to shut down internet, to shut down certain media companies from airing out Azimio fourth demonstration that is scheduled for the 3rd of April 2023. That's what I'm saying. It is no longer important whether someone is in Azimio or someone is in Kenya Kwanza, but we are going to experience something quite bizarre. This is something that we saw in Uganda a couple of years ago when Uganda, when Museveni wanted to, con to, wanted to deal with the opposition. So, so Museveni chose to give the country a media blackout. Internet was shut down, Twitter could not operate, Facebook could not operate, YouTube could not operate. So that enabled Museveni to execute his plan. So last yesterday, Gachagua issued certain threats which to, to now nobody has known the true meaning of that threat. But Gachagua said that Monday will be the last <coughs> day of Azimio on Kenya Lands demonstrations. So many narratives have been derived from that statement. One has been that there is an assassination threat. Two is that people will be arrested aimlessly and taken to custody and charged with robbery with violence. Then there is this narrative that has just uh, came up. And this is a narrative on media shutdown. Now, this, is, this will be the biggest injustice that Kenyans will be subjected to if the government decides to shut down internet, to shut down certain media houses, what does it mean, ladies and gentlemen? Before we dive in into this analysis further, please, if you're a first-time viewer or a regular viewer who wasn't subscribed to this channel, please consider supporting Yoleno TV by subscribing to it. Also, don't forget to give us a like, and then you can hit the notification bell so that every time we upload any video, you will always become the first person to get notified. Now, journalists and editors have alleged a plan by the government to shut down the internet and some media houses ahead of the fourth round of opposition demonstrations on Monday. So, under the auspices, under the auspices of the Kenya Media Sector Working Group, the media stakeholders strongly called out Deputy Grigadi Gachagua and pockets of senior Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance officials for attempting to deny the free flow of information to the public. We say this because we have received reports of plans to shut down the broadcast media and to shut down the internet and throw the country into information darkness ahead of tomorrow's demonstrations. This would be most ill-advised and a grievous assault on Kenya's democracy because it denies the Kenyan citizens and the Kenyan public their rights to information. From the media perspective, taking this route will sink us all as a country. Number two, we acknowledge that the right to peaceful assembly is a foundation of a democratic and tolerant society as enshrined in our constitution 2010. And we, the media, have a democratic duty to bring such information to the public and to our citizens. However, we note with concern the wave of attacks, both online and offline, 
met it against media workers in their line of duty. Number three, while safety of journalists should be guaranteed, the Kenya Media Sector Working Group notes with alarm the increasing number of journalists targeted by law enforcement officers. Since the demonstration by the Zimio La Umoja coalition began on March 20th this year, we have documented more than 20 cases of attacks and violations against journalists, including harassment, arbitrary arrests, and physical attacks with state actors responsible or encouraging a significant proportion of these attacks. This is what we call, ladies and gentlemen, media gagging, trying to blackmail the media into relaying what the government wants so that in future the, 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 the media fraternity do not tell the people or show the people the true events, the true pictures for fear that they will be shut down. This is what the government is subjecting the media fraternity to. But the media fraternity to, fraternity has come out clear and have said we have received reports of plans to shut down the broadcast media and the internet and throw the country in information darkness ahead of tomorrow's demonstrations. This will be the most ill-advised and a grievous assault on Kenyan democracy because it denies the citizens the right and the public their right to information. From a media perspective, taking this route will sink us all as a country. That is a message that was released by the president of Kenya's Editors Guild, Churchill Otieno. And he made this statement on Sunday. So, dear viewers, where does this leave us as a country? This is positioning Kenya as a banana republic, a republic that is con a country that is confused and a country that does, does not have the rule of law. The constitution has given Kenyans the right to information. The constitution has given journalists the right to air out uh, information to people. So, if the government decides to take that route of shutting down the internet, shutting down the media broadcast, the only motive is that they want to execute something that is not allowed by the society, something that is not supported by the constitution of the Republic of Kenya. I see double standards in the implementation of the constitution. Most of the time, the Kenya Kwanza people remind us that you people need to follow the law. But when it comes to the Kenya Kwanza people following the law, they bend this law. So the mere fact that they are thinking, just thinking of shutting down the internet only makes it, uh, uh, makes it uh, known that this government is not abiding by the law, ladies and gentlemen. It cannot be possible that serikali naamua kwamba internet izimwe, kila kitu izimwe, alafu watu watapata nini, watapata information aje. Mind you, this... The kind of current era that we are we live in is not like the 1992 of the Moy era where internet is not so Internet is not so easy. Internet is not so easy. Internet is not Right now, the world is composed of a global village and the social platforms that are, in, that are existing right now have made it possible for people to get first-hand, real-time information as they occur. It is contrary to, to those days when an event could happen in the daytime and this event will be showcased at 7 p.m. This time round, things are relayed on a written basis. That's why media houses have also been forced to utilize the digital platform so that they can have the media information relayed on a real-time basis. In case the government interferes with the media house and journalists covering Azimi One Kenya last demonstrations, the media stakeholders have threatened a raft of measures, including giving the government a blackout and staging a peaceful demonstration on Monday, on Wednesday. So this is a threat again from the media that if the government decides to beat the media uh, staffs like they did in the previous demonstrations, if the media is, uh, the, the government decides to shut down the media, then the media are saying that they give the government a blackout. One, two, they are saying that they will hold a demonstration. They will protest a peaceful demonstration 
on Wednesday regarding this in uncouth behavior from the government of Kenya. So, ladies and gentlemen, kindly share what the texts are below the comment section. And once again, I'd like to urge you to stay safe and stay blessed until you catch up again in our next analysis.